I'm preaching on this thought this evening, living in Laodicea. Let's pray. Lord, Father God, we thank you so much for the sweet stir from another world this evening. Thank you, God, for the sweet songs of Zion, Lord. The choir sounded mighty good this evening, God. We know it wasn't them, it was you touching them, God, and we thank you for it. And Lord, we pray now that you touch this message, Lord. Drive it deep in the hearts of the ones that are here. And do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, God. Because we're totally unable, Lord, to pick ourselves up, God. And do anything for ourselves, God. We're totally relying upon you. Anything getting accomplished here tonight, God, I'll make sure that you get all the praise, honor, and glory for it, God. Because there ain't not one thing not one of us can do for ourselves, Lord. And God, we praise you and thank you for that marvelous gift of salvation through the precious blood atonement of your Son, Jesus Christ. And God, God, help me do my feeble best, Lord, for just a little while. Preach your message to your people. And it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. Living in Laodicea, amen. <coughs> the last church of the seven churches that gets a letter wrote to them. And believe it or not, that's the closing out of the church age which you and I have found ourselves in. This message was birthed all due to the thought of that little uh, saying right there of what the Lord says, Thou art lukewarm. Amen. I have found out that this lukewarm weather down here in Georgia ain't agreeing none too much with me. Amen. Back up in the hill country, it set in and turned cold. We get a snotty nose for a few days and then we was fine. This mediocre stuff ain't a cutting it for me. It don't agree in my system, not none too bit. Amen. And can I tell you something? Not only is it making me sick, lukewarmness, lukewarmness made the Lord sick. And I sure as the world have been in a lot of lukewarm churches. Amen. Wouldn't the God, like the Lord said, you'd rather be cold or you'd rather be hot. This lukewarm, this half in, half out kind of Christianity ain't cutting it where we're at. Amen. Ain't no wonder nobody getting born again. Amen. I believe the lost world would rather see you cold or hot as well too. Amen. Do you know what makes lukewarmness when cold and hot meets? Amen. Every church I've ever been in unto God has got some that sits over here that's just on fire for the Lord, ready to go, chomping at the bit, ready to go and do something. They are flaming hot. And then over here on the other side, you got the cold side, amen, that give you frostbite when you shake hands with them. Anybody remember the DLT back in the 80s or am I dating myself too much? Keep the hot side hot and the cold side cold is a creepy little hamburger McDonald's made for a marketing gimmick. Came in a little tray, it looks like the hot cake thing now. Had a divider in it, your hamburger and bun was over here, your lettuce, tomato, and all the cold stuff was over here on this side. And when you got them together, you put them together, that way your lettuce didn't get all wilty and stuff. Can I tell you something? We got some McDLT Christians in the house tonight, amen? Because we got some that's hot, we got some that's cold. When they come together, your lettuce gets all squishy. Amen. Good preaching if I am doing it. You got that lukewarmness. And it ain't a getting it. You're going to have to catch on fire or you're going to have to cool down. I say let her burn. Amen. Amen. Fan them flames. If there's just a little ember, get down on that thing, fan a little bit, blow on whatever it takes to get that to rip roaring. Amen. I don't know how things are down here. I ain't been down here long enough. Anybody, anybody a scanner junkie down here? Police scanner. Y'all looking at me like half looking at Newgate. Hey man, Brother Lefford is. <laughs> Police scanners. Boy, that was high-tech redneck entertainment where we used to come from. Everybody had a police scanner. When something was going on, you better believe they went to it. Especially if it was a far, amen, because everybody wanted to go to see something, amen, that was a blazing. Can I tell you something? We want to see people come in the church house, they're going to have to see something that is a blaze for God, amen. So we need to be on far. Amen. Amen. Living in Laodicea, that's just where we're at. We just have to accept it, amen. It's God's will for us. The Lord, as He's putting these churches down through here, He saved the worst one for last. All the others, they started out pretty good in Ephesus. They get going down through here, and then we wind up in Laodicea. Let me give you a few things about Laodicea. <clears throat> Laodicea was a place of fashion. <laughs> Amen. It was rumored that Laodicea produced the finest fabric around at that time. The people of Laodicea also discovered or invented, however you want to do it, a special clothing dye or a special dye for the fabrics, if you will. 
People would travel for miles and miles and miles, amen, to get the fabric of Laodicea. So it was a place of fashion, if you will. Hey, if that ain't the last day church in which you and I is living in, I'll eat your dirty socks, as my dear friend Johnny Campbell says. They more people come to church to be seen, amen, than to praise and worship God. Amen, they spend more time getting ready in front of the mirror than they do getting ready in their prayer closet. Can I tell you something? To keep the hot side hot and the cold side cold, it's time that you start to quit getting away from the mirror and start getting to God and getting ready for Sunday morning long about Wednesday night, amen. I don't care what you look like. I've done being caught, and thank God for it. Amen. You ain't got put on for me. I don't believe you got put on for anybody else in here. Amen. Just drag a comb through your hair. Amen. Brush your nasty teeth. Amen. And come on in. Amen. It ain't a fashion show unless you're really living in Laodicea. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying wear your pajamas in here and all that either. But it ain't a fashion show. That don't impress me none. Our children think Goodwill's a name brand. Amen. I kind of like it that way. Laodicea was a place of fashion. They produced the finest fabric. They invented a special dye. Laodicea was also a place of finance. It's a money-centered society. Amen. And the reason why Laodicea was destroyed was because they refused government assistance from Rome. From what I've read. Amen. It's not only a place of finance, it's a place of fashion, it's also a place of finance. It was a money-centered society. Can I tell you, a whole heap of a lot of churches, it's a money-centered society today. More is said about money than there is said about Jesus and salvation. Amen. I can say that because I've heard that. Amen. First hand. Amen. I have seen it. If I hadn't seen it or heard it first hand, I wouldn't be telling you about it. More people are concerned about, amen, all this stuff that we can do with the old greenbacks and what we can do about reaching people for the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't shout me down now. I understand you got to have money. Keep doors open, Brother Nathan, as we was talking about earlier. I understand that there in your prayer. Amen. We got to have that, amen, but I'm telling you what, it ought not be our first thing on our minds. Amen. I say we let God be God and let Him take care of His church, amen. If you're tithing, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. You've crossed Christianity 101, you can move on to Christianity 102, amen. Don't you dare call yourself, I'm going to hit this one for a while. Don't you dare call yourself a mature Christian if you ain't tithing, amen. That's about as fundamental as it gets right there, tithing. Say, preacher, I can't afford to tithe. Hey, you can't afford not to tithe. And I ain't saying that because I'm the preacher. I was tithing when I was bringing in $20 a week, amen. If you don't tithe, guess what? You ain't going to get no blessings, amen. And guess what? You're robbing God, amen. You're robbing God of His money to be used in His house for His ministry. Hey, this ain't my ministry. This ain't Faith Baptist ministry. This is God's ministry. Amen. You wonder why things befall you all the time? It's God saying, hey, there's a thing called a tithe. And tithing is the first step. Tithing's what Abraham done. Amen. Abraham wasn't under law. You and I, amen, are better off than Abraham. Can I get an amen right there this evening? Amen. You and I better off. We get to tithe and guess what? We get to give offerings too. Amen. Hallelujah. I like them. Amen. Going above and beyond. I like it when God taps me on the shoulder and says, Hey, I know it don't look right in the bank account, but you just go ahead. Amen. And before you can make it out the door, somebody slips you a hundred dollar bill. Hey, Amen. Does that happen all the time? No. But it's happened more than once. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me help those of you that's struggling with this. Amen. Maybe we can go on something else. And like I said, just, just watch my example and listen to my experience of what happened here. We was at a meeting one time up the road from the house. And preacher was there. And the collection plate come around 
And God said, put everything you got in your pocket in that plate. Hey, 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 I just left my job. I had no jobs lined out. I'm looking at like 30 bucks to last me until who knows when. Amen. I think it was 30 bucks. I don't know how much it was. But it, it, so I said, all right, Lord, you gave me this. It's yours anyway. Amen. It ain't mine. It's his. So I said, all right, till we meet again. In the plate we go. Preacher preach a phenomenal message. Altar's full. Nobody gets saved. I got some help. Shouted, ran a lap or two. On my way out the door, preacher Randy grabs me, shakes my hand, and says, take this. I said, preacher, I can't do that. He said, he said God told me to give you this. So I just take, stick it in my pocket, and never thought no more about it. I get back to the house, I get to looking, $150. <laughs> Under God. That's God. Preacher, that never happened to me. Oh, hey, it will if you start giving. Hey, man. Like I said, tithing Christianity 101. That and reading your Bible and praying. I know a lot of y'all can't even get over them three humps right there. Hey, man, you stuck on the milk. Hey, man, you can't even get to the meat because you stuck down in here in jello pudding land. Hey, man, 10%. 10% of nothing's nothing. Amen. 10% of $100 a week, $10. Guess what? What else are you going to do with $10? Amen. 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 I think y'all tied before taxes too. Did y'all hear that? Amen. And then give an offering when you get your income tax refund. Amen. You want to see the storehouses of heaven open up for you? That's right. It's what it takes. Whew, God help. I felt good on that one. Y'all okay? Y'all still with me? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good friend of mine. We went over and listened to him preach the other night in Roanoke, Alabama. He got to hitting on tithing. He said, you know why I lock that motor home up? Amen. Everybody's like, well, what for? He says, hey, y'all stealing from God? I ain't so stupid to think y'all wouldn't steal from me. Amen. Amen. Right. Hey, man. Is our van locked, honey? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all still from God wouldn't help me think about y'all doing the same thing to me as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to tithe. It's good to give. Amen. 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 And don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Ain't nobody else's business. Amen. I ain't got to know. You ain't got to know. Your neighbor ain't got to know. And hey, if you give and say, look at me putting in here. Look at me. Look at me. That's all the reward you're going to get. Praise God, I wasn't fixing on preaching this this evening. We okay? <coughs> Amen. If you just want to be seen of men, ain't no one. You ain't getting no blessing. Look at me, God, I'm tithing. Here, here it goes. Look at the envelope. See it? That's all you're going to get. The preacher says so. Mark her down. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a place of fashion. It's a place of finance. Hope we ain't got no visitors in here tonight. Amen. If I did, they gone. <laughs> Amen. Lost people definitely can't take that kind of preaching. They make them mad. That's all they're talking about down there is money. No. I'm more concerned about people getting saved. Saved people ought to know they need to give. Amen. 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 All right. The place of fashion, place of finance is also a place of pharmaceuticals. They all see it as a place of pharmaceuticals. It was a medical facility there. Amen. They studied medicine. Amen. Now, here's what I found out, amen, reading in my book about the, the place of Laodicea. And get this, they invented an eye ointment there. They was big in ophthalmology there. Can you imagine that? Some pretty near 2,000 years ago, they invented an eye salve to help with the eyes. Now, if you think about it, living over there in the Mediterranean, amen, that type of climate, dusty, dirty stuff, amen, they had a lot of eye problems. From what I read, amen, and I study this stuff out, from what I read, they invented like an eye salve over there to help with the treatment of the eye irritations. Amen. Now, did anybody just catch what I just read to you here? Amen. There is a place of fashion. Amen. And there is a place of finance. And there is a place of pharmaceuticals that made eye salve of all things. 
What did we just read here in our text? Amen. I counsel thee of me, to, uh, of, of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Amen. <laughs> that thou mayest be rich. They thought they was rich because they had finances. Amen. And by white raiment, there is a, a center, of, there is a Paris, France of the day, amen, as far as fashion goes. And here the Lord's telling them, you need to buy white raiment of me, amen. And the Lord tells them, you need to anoint your eyes with eyes. And here they was, a big place, amen, in the medical field at that point in time. Wow. Does the Lord know these people or what? Amen. In all their greatness, they still had to receive the worst rebuke. From the Lord Jesus, amen. And can I tell you something? I believe we're living there today. Let's get on through this thing. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, I know thy works. Jesus knew their works. They're neither cold nor hot. The Lord says, I wish thou were, would, I would thou work cold or hot. You know what causes this lukewarmness? Contentment in the church. Contentment. In the church. Amen, preacher. Contentment in the church causes lukewarmness. It used to be a saying in our circle. It's the evangelist's job to afflict the comforted and the pastor's job to comfort the afflicted. Amen. I believe what Paul wrote to Timothy. I am to do the work of an evangelist. From time to time it is my job, amen, to afflict the comforted. Amen. That way you don't stick on the bottom. And that way you don't burn, amen. And most importantly, that way you don't get comfortable and get content in the house of God. Hey, I love coming in here and shouting her down, having a good time, amen, with all the singing and all that, amen. But you know what? The Bible doesn't say, go ye in the world and sing to every creature. The Bible says, go ye in the world and preach, amen. Sometimes preaching is going to rub you raw. Sometimes you need preaching to make you grow straight, amen. Singing ain't going to get it, church. Hey, I love it just as much as the next man. Sometimes I can't help but wonder if the old flesh loves it a little more. Let's just be honest. Amen. I ain't got not one thing against it as long as it's done correctly. But if that's all you got, you might as well close the doors down and change the sign out there. Amen. Because you ain't got church no more. You got yourself a honky tonk. Amen. Amen. But a lot of people, they get content with where they're at. They get content in their Bible study, amen. I ain't saying this is true everywhere, but it sure as the world does seem to fit the mold and the stereotype could be made about it. It appears people hit the spiritual plateau and they like to stay there. They don't go back down. They don't go any further. They just get content. And whenever that happens, you got yourself some problems, church. You ought not ever get content in this thing. Because we ain't arrived. We ain't arrived. The Bible says, I know thy works. Would thou were cold or hot. People get content in the church. <coughs> Not only does a lukewarm church get content, amen, can I also tell you they get careless about new converts. They get to a point to where they could care less about going out and seeing anybody get born again. They get to a point where they don't want to go out and tell somebody the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That right there is lukewarmness in a nutshell. They're happy where they're at. Amen. So they could care less about anybody else. Amen. Now I ain't saying we all ought to be super Christian. Bust our shirts home and a big old SC be there and be an automatic track dispenser everywhere we go. Amen. But can I tell you something? There's something terribly bad wrong with you. If you get to the point to where you could care less about seeing people get saved again. Me and a friend of mine was talking the other day. He said, how's things going? I said, they're going. He said, how, how, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing all right. He said, what have you been doing? I said, I've been sinking the plow in, brother. I'm sinking the plow in, getting ready to sow some seed. I said, it ain't going to do no good if you don't sink that plow in and tear the ground up. Amen. Because that seed just hit and roll off. It won't take root. It won't get in there. Plowing is necessary. But can I tell you something else? It ain't always the plowman that goes through and sows the seed. Amen. Sometimes it got to be somebody else follow along and trail behind. Amen. And sow the seed. 
Sometimes they got to be somebody come in behind the sower and keep the birds, the crows kicked out the way, amen, to make sure that precious seed don't get plucked up. Can I go even further? There got to be somebody come out and water a little bit. They got to be somebody go through and take some weeds out, amen. They got to be some go through and make sure that seed is getting everything it needs, amen. But guess what? It ain't us that gets the increase. It is God that gets the increase. And we ought to be concerned about converts. You say, well, it just seems like the Spirit of God is just... Don't tell me that. I don't want to hear it. I don't like that negativity. Amen. I believe God's still in the saving business. I know this ABC, repeat after me, junk, amen, has just put a bad taste in all our mouths. But you know what? Hey, sometimes we just got to look beyond things and see people get saved. And tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ain't talking, you all know me better. And I ain't talking dropping standards, amen. I ain't talking about compromising. I'm talking about caring for converts. The heartbeat of the church ought to be seeing people get saved. Amen. We're quite content, preacher. Well, I guess I'm preaching to you tonight then. Amen. Amen. I know thy works are neither cold nor hot. You're content in church. You're careless about new converts. Maybe you're just a compromising Christian. (laughs) Amen. You're here one day, gone the next. Amen. We don't have to hit too much on this. We've done wore that pony out. Amen. You compromise and look good for some. I'm trying to fit in. That thing don't work. It'll make you lukewarm. We see we know the works. I want you to look here. They have need of nothing. (coughs) In verse number 17. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. In other words, this is a self-sufficient church. Amen. They have need of nothing. They don't need anything from the outside. Like I done told you there, according to what I read, uh, the nation of Rome right there uh, refused the government assistance from Rome, so Caesar had them destroyed. Amen. They were that self-sufficient. They did not need Rome. Amen. I believe we're living in a day and age where we got a lot of churches they don't even need Jesus. Amen. I believe if we read on down through here in verse number 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. Jesus on the outside wanting in. I know a lot of people use that for soul winning, and hey, that's fine and dandy if you can do that. But the fact of the matter is, in true context, that is still in the letter to a church. Amen. He is on the outside wanting in. Amen. They're self-sufficient. Hey, I, I found out yesterday just how far I can make it on my own power, Brother Holt. <laughs> Not very far. Amen. And I believe they had a lot of churches doing that. Boy, they look good on the outside, and boy, they, they run running well, it looks like. But the fact of the matter is, they cannot run. As I tried teaching them young folk yesterday, this ain't a race to the swift. It's an endurance race. And guess what? If you ain't got the God inside of you, amen, you ain't going to make it. This self-sufficiency we got, amen, we can handle things on our own. Amen. We can, we can do it, amen. We can do it. Let's get the rubber where the road meets. We've had a lot of sickness in this church. You ain't got to raise your hands, but I want you to think of this. How many of you all really prayed before you started taking something for that cold? Amen. Got on your face before God and said, God, touch me. And have faith in what you was praying. Or did y'all just go take care of it yourself? Home remedies, over-the-counter stuff. Maybe you went to the doctor. Amen. And I ain't against going to the doctor. I ain't saying that. I'm saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. Do all that first. Pray. Amen. Pray, pray, pray. Maybe it ain't God's will for you to go get Robitussin. Maybe God wants you to go to the doctor. Amen. Maybe God says, no, you just need to go get some Tylenol cold and lay in bed for a day or two. You'll be all right. Pray. Seek God's face on what he really wants you to do first. Don't just jump and run and be self-sufficient. Amen. Amen. We see here that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. In other words, not only was they self-sufficient, they were satisfied with stuff. (laughs) They liked having things. Amen. Because they was increased with goods. Amen. Just because you got some don't mean nothing. Amen. 
More things, more trouble. Amen, amen, and amen. That applies to anything in this world. If you're just filling yourself with hollow, empty things of this world, and you're just getting and getting and getting, amen, just to be getting and getting and getting, amen, guess what? You're satisfying yourself with a bunch of junk that will rot away. Amen. Don't ever be satisfied with stuff here on earth. Amen. Notice here, they were surprised at what they're short on. In verse 17, knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Amen. Imagine they got that letter and they read it. And they said, what do you mean? We're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Don't you know anything? We are Laodicea. We are the center of fashion. We are the center of pharmaceuticals. We are the center of finances. And we could not be wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. Amen. That's just how spiritually blind they were. They didn't realize that just having the stuff of this world, amen, made them wretched and miserable and poor in the kingdom of God, amen. They were blind and naked, amen, standing before God, pleading their own works, pleading their own self-righteousness, their own self-sufficiency, amen. That's exactly where they was at. Amen. Look what the Lord does here for them, though. Lord tells them that I counsel thee in verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed with thy shame of thy nakedness, do not peer, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Amen. The Lord is offering out and reaching out to them. Amen. God's telling them the things that you have ain't fit worth having. God's telling them, saying, look here, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're blind, but I'm offering you a chance right now to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. God's talking about an uncorruptible gold. Amen. One that will not tarnish. One that will not rust. Amen. Saying if you get this gold that I'm speaking of, you will be rich. God's saying your wretched, miserable clothing that you got won't even cover up your nakedness. But I am offering you a white robe of righteousness. Amen. That will cover up the shame of your nakedness. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Amen. What the Lord God Almighty is offering to church of Laodicea is the same thing He's offering out to you right now. Things that you cannot buy with money. Things that you cannot buy with gold. Things you cannot buy with silver. He's offering you things of righteousness that His Son provided through His precious blood. Amen. Let's look at the spiritual values, what God gave them. God offered them spiritual values. Gold tried to fire. <coughs> He's saying, forget about that man-made earthly gold. I'm offering you something so much better. True spiritual values. He's also offering them spiritual virtues in that white raiment. Can I tell you something? The world can see through your facade right now and see your spiritual nakedness. That's why they thought what they was covering up, but the Lord saw right through it. Amen. The Lord ain't the only one that can see through it. I'm telling you right now, a lot of us can see through, amen, what you're trying to cover up. Amen. Through your little uh, clothing that you think's fine. But the Lord offers your spiritual virtues. The Lord also offers spiritual vision with the eye salve. Amen. We need to see ourselves and others. Amen. As God sees us. Look at here, I understand when we're reading the Bible. Behold, now we are sons of God. I understand the doctrine of adoption, amen. I understand that I am joint heir with Jesus Christ, amen. But the fact of the matter is, I'm still just a speck of dust, amen. It's time a lot of us start looking at ourselves that way. We've done nothing to merit our salvation. We've done everything to crucify the Savior, if you will. We need to see ourselves as that. We need to see others with their need of a Savior. Amen. We need to look beyond their faults and look beyond their fashions. Amen. And look beyond how terrible they may look, how terrible they may appear. Amen. And see that they need the same Savior that we got. Amen. <coughs> we see here they had spiritual vision. We see also the spiritual vitality that's offered in verse number 19. Spiritual vitality, yeah, there's spiritual life right here. The Bible says, me as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I believe we wrote on that a little bit this morning, too. We need to repent. As we already know, and it's already been said, and already acclimated here, we don't stand for that sinless perfection. 
But you know, when was the last time you really did get on your face and repent? You repented of being sorry for your sin. Sin is still sin in the sight of God. It's not changed. His view of it's not changed. And it's not an opinion on sin. It is the fact God still abhors sin. Amen. He cannot tolerate it. It is a stench in the nostrils of God. But God offers us spiritual vitality through repentance. God offers us a chance to repent and turn from our ways and turn towards Him. Yeah, that's for the lost and for the saved. Amen. Amen. If you're here and you're lost this evening, repent. Ask God to save you. If you're here and you're saved this evening and you've got your little closet sin that you're hiding, amen, repent of that. You can't lose your salvation. We understand this. But you sure as the world can lose reward and you can lose blessings. Maybe it's you that's not tithing this evening. Guess what? That's sin. You need to repent. You ain't got to confess it to me. Get it right with God. Maybe you come in here and you use the aisles as your catwalk to show off your fashions. And you're far, far away from God. Repent of that. Ask God to help you with it. Amen. Maybe you're spiritually blind this evening. It's time for you to repent. God's got you singled out. Living in Laodicea. I know these last days in which we end look mighty hard. It looked mighty unfavorable. But the Lord stirred in remembrance of my heart and a man by the name of Benai. He was the son of Jehoiada. You can read about him in 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verse number 22, about what I'm fixing to tell you. He was one of David's mighty men. He was up against some mighty unfavorable conditions. He went down and slew a lion on a snowy day. He went down in a pit with a lion on a snowy day. Well, that's mighty unfavorable right from the get-go. It wouldn't matter if it's sunny and 70, going down in a pit with a lion, amen, that's pretty unfavorable. Whenever he went down in there, I'm sure he didn't look at that and say, well, you know, this is going to be a mighty hard job. I don't think I'll just pass off on this. Amen. No, he looked and he saw a need for some reason that he had to go down on that snowy day, down in that pit and lock horns with that line. Can I tell you something? He went down in there knowing this. Only one of them was going to come back up out of that pit alive. That looks mighty unfavorable. That looked mighty unfair. We're going down there to Colt 19, 11, 45, amen, on a snowy day into a pit with a lion, amen, shooting the way some of us shoot in here, amen. But Benai went down in there regardless of the unfavorable conditions. Can I tell you something, church? Yeah, we're living in a dark time, but no better time to let our light shine than in these unfavorable conditions. Look down in that pit on the snowy day. Look your line right square in the eye and say, guess what? I'm a here and I'm a child of king and you ain't going to get me down. I'll wear your hide up out of here. Amen. Living in Laodicea, that's the attitude we need to adopt. Yeah, it's unfavorable out there. The world's stacked against us. Amen. But guess what? We got something the world ain't got. We got something the world ain't got. We just don't need to be lukewarm about it. Amen. Brother Abner, you want to come play a song? We'll stand to our feet.